We have a lot to cover for the past week so let's get into it. For our news in autism. Autism 360 has exciting news as they introduce their AI-driven digital therapeutic solution to the United States, marking their expansion with a new office in Orange County, California. This innovative app was meticulously crafted to provide families with autistic children invaluable resources and tools to aid in their child's skill development while waiting for professional support. Beyond assisting families, the app extends its services to individuals with autistic family members, fostering a supportive community where users can connect with others sharing similar experiences. Initially focusing on California, Autism 360 is already in discussions with local school districts, aiming to establish a solid presence before expanding nationwide. Founded by Ash Bhattacharya and Sherry Data in 2019, Autism 360 holds a distinct advantage with its leadership team consisting of neurodivergent individuals, reflecting their commitment to community-driven services. With 1 in 36 children diagnosed with autism in the U.S. in 2022, there's an increasing strain on the support system, leading to lengthy waitlists for crucial professional assistance. Ash Bhattacharya emphasizes the urgency of early intervention and the app's mission to alleviate the challenges families face empowering them to become effective advocates for their autistic children. The platform not only addresses these pressing issues but also offers a range of services provided by licensed experts to cater to the diverse needs of autistic individuals, all while maintaining affordability and accessibility to ensure no one is left behind in their journey to support autism. Now for our news in art. Sotheby's Auction House has announced its acquisition of the art collection of philanthropist Chara Schreier, hailed as one of the most influential collectors and patrons of post-war and contemporary art in the 21st century. This acquisition marks the securing of two major estates to be auctioned this year, with Sotheby's previously winning the collection of New York philanthropist Emily Fisher Landau over Christie's. The auction, titled, Art House, the collection of Chara Schreier, is a nod to the 2016 book exploring Schreier's partnership with designer Gary Hutton, the distinctive homes she curated from Los Angeles to the Bay Area, and the art intended to complement these homes. The leading piece in the sale is Frank Stella's monumental, Honduras Lottery Co. 1962, from his Concentric Square series, with an estimated value of $10 million to $15 million. This series is particularly rare, with only six works of this size ever created. Among the highlights is Marcel Duchamp's, De OU par Marcel Duchamp OU Rose Salavi, La Boite en Valise, Series A, between 1941 and 1949, estimated at $1.8 million to $2.5 million. While not the most expensive piece, it held significant personal value for Schreier and was displayed prominently in her Marin County home. The work, often referred to as La Boite en Valise, consists of a leather suitcase containing 69 reproductions of Duchamp's works and one original piece. Only 20 were produced, along with four examples, and the one offered is numbered VXX in the edition. Other notable pieces in the collection include Eva Hesse's Top Spot, 1965, Robert Gober's Deep Basin Sink, 1984, and Donald Judd's 1969 work, Untitled. The selected artworks from this collection will embark on a tour starting from October 2, making stops in Hong Kong, London, and Los Angeles, before returning to New York on November 1 for the auction. For career development. Forbes published an article called, Neurodiversity and Investment Finance – The Future of Work. The article examines the disparities in the inclusion of neuro-minorities in the workplace, highlighting the contrasting findings of two reports. The 2018 Westminster Achievability WAC, report revealed that 69% of respondents regretted disclosing their neurodivergence due to perceived exclusion. In contrast, the Diversity Project's report in 2022, focusing on the investment and savings sector, indicated that 70% of respondents had positive experiences upon disclosing their neurodivergence to their employers. The article questions whether this shift signifies progress or is unique to the investment and savings finance industry. A comparison of the two reports' findings reveals significant differences. In the Diversity Project's report, 54% found it easy to access adjustments, 58% found their employers supportive, and the majority of respondents were either autistic or ADHD. In contrast, the WAC report had a larger sample size but did not specify industries, 
although it found that minoritized backgrounds were more likely to report discrimination. The article emphasizes the need for intersectional data to understand whether the higher numbers of ADHD and autistic individuals in the Diversity Project survey are primarily white middle-class men. It explores whether privilege is responsible for the better outcomes reported compared to the WAC report. It also raises concerns about gender and race ethnicity bias in diagnosis and employment. The article concludes by suggesting that the future of work may involve increased personalization and flexibility, particularly in accommodating neurodiversity in the workplace. It underscores the importance of including diverse neurodivergent voices to create genuinely inclusive workplaces and learn what adjustments are necessary for productivity and well-being. For current events. How West Africa can reap more profit from the chocolate market. The article discusses Fairafric's efforts to ensure that West Africa, a region that produces 70% of the world's cocoa beans, reaps more profits from the global chocolate market. While Africa produces the raw cocoa beans, it only manufactures 1% of the chocolate, with most of the value-added processes occurring in American and European multinational companies. Fair Africa's goal is to change this by manufacturing chocolate within Ghana, creating jobs, and distributing profits more equitably among farmers, factory workers, and local investors. However, Fair Africa faces challenges in infrastructure, financing, and economic stability, particularly exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic and other global economic factors. Ghana's economy has been hit hard, with high inflation rates and currency devaluation, leading to a national default on foreign loans. Local banks are more inclined to invest in government bonds than in local businesses, creating funding difficulties. Despite these challenges, Fair Africa's unique approach, including a crowdfunding campaign, partnerships with German investors, and support from development banks, has helped the company establish a chocolate factory in Ghana. They also pay a premium for organically grown beans and ensure fair wages and benefits for their employees. To achieve broader economic benefits, Fair Africa recognizes the need to go beyond cocoa farming and invest in value-added processes within the region. And for our newly added section on special interests. 8 Things You May Not Know About Trains Number 1. The term, horsepower, originated from James Watt's marketing strategy for his steam engine, which greatly improved efficiency by adding a separate condenser. Number 2. America's first steam locomotive, Tom Thumb, lost a race to a horse but eventually led to the adoption of steam engines by the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. Number 3. Trains played a crucial role in the American Civil War by facilitating troop transport and control of crucial supply routes. Number 4. Abraham Lincoln's assassination helped popularize train travel, particularly comfortable sleeper cars developed by George Pullman. Number 5. The world's first travel agency, Thomas Cook & Son, began as a result of organizing a train excursion in 1841. Number 6. Railroads contributed to the establishment of standardized time zones in the United States in 1883. Number 7. The U.S. saw a rapid expansion of railroad tracks, reaching a peak of over 250,000 miles in 1916. Number 8. Today's bullet trains can achieve speeds of over 300 miles per hour, with Japan holding the current world speed record and high-speed rail systems exist in various countries, including France, China, and Germany, with plans for such systems in the United States. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Learning Curve. As we wrap up, we'd like to remind you that The Learning Curve is a product of Nefalaba Dance Theatre, dedicated to pushing artistic boundaries and shedding light on unique perspectives. We hope this performance has left you inspired and moved, and we invite you to explore more of our thought-provoking work. Your support fuels our creative endeavors, and we look forward to sharing more compelling stories with you in the future. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated with our latest projects. We'll see you in the next one.